Okay, so um, for those of you that have joined or those of you that are watching on Facebook, my name is Eleanor West. I'm the Demoscopist for National Skin Cancer Centres. Uh, what that means is my job is to um, assess the skin head to toe uh, and look for skin cancer uh, or potential lesions of risk uh, and then work alongside doctors and refer them on that way. Uh, so tonight we're going to go through a couple of things. Uh, for, for those of you that might be new to any knowledge for skin cancer or have never had a skin check before, this will be quite useful for you. So we're going to um, have a bit of knowledge around uh, what skin cancer is and the types and also ways you can monitor them. I've got a lot of visual tools for you, so um, I hope you enjoy images. I've got a fair few, so I feel that a lot of people like learning through the actual visual aspects of seeing what a lesion or a skin cancer will look like, and then you might be able to say, ah, yes, I've seen one of those before. Um, another important thing is five signs of melanoma, so detection signs that we may have seen before. So um, I'll go through those in detail. The process of what we do at National Skin Cancer Centres for a full body check, so talking about like a head, shoulders, knees and toes check. Um, we will cover in detail as well people that are in high risk, so people that are maybe highly likely to get a skin cancer. Um, at some stage in their life, and also some sun safety tips to prevent this. Um, and then, obviously, we're going to go through the best time to get a skin check. So, if you get something from tonight, um, it shouldn't be anything negative. It should be how to uh, start the safety process of prevention. Alrighty, so this image here uh, is just to start off with. With the naked eye, we always look like we've got new, beautiful skin, but the second image is how the sun sees us. So I want to touch base on UV radiation, um, ultraviolet, which is a, what the sun does to our skin. It is something that we can't generally see with the naked eye. It does cause a lot of damage in, at a cellular level deep down, and it causes um, the melanin within the skin, so the browning of the skin, to come to our defence. And this is where you probably see advertisement and education around there's nothing healthy about a tan. It's generally skin in distress. All right, so to, what's important is skin cancer is one of the few cancers that are preventable. The reason being is you can see it. Uh, and the most important thing about that all is, is you don't need a referral from a specialist to get it checked and get it removed. It is something that you can just walk in into one of our centres and get a full skin check and then sleep easier at night. So we're going to go through um, what skin cancer is. So what it is, it's an, it's an uncontrolled growth of abnormal or damaged cells within the skin. So without going into a full biology lesson, you could imagine a normal skin cell that replicates and dies and a new one replicates and dies. Um, but what happens when it's one is damaged, let's say by sun, it starts to replicate in an abnormal way. And this is where we get an abundant growth of cells, maybe pigmented, maybe unpigmented, that um, has a potential to be cancerous. And this is where a process called um, metastases, where it can get down to the bloodstream um, and spread elsewhere. And this is when it grows above and beyond just the natural borders or the margins of the skin and starts growing downwards, and then it can spread elsewhere in the body. This is a stage where we don't want it to get to, so we're going to talk a little bit about prevention as well a bit later on. So the three main types that I want you to be aware of for yourselves and family members uh, and I'll show you a fair few images of these, is a basal cell carcinoma, also known as a BCC. This is from continuous exposure to UV radiation. So talking people that are in the sun, not just every day here or there, it's every day uh, chronic exposure. So we're talking outdoor workers, uh, people that are in the car, or people that enjoy outdoor activities more than those that work indoors or uh, more introverted indoor people. So squamous cell carcinoma is the next one we're talking about, or SCC, sporadic exposure. So it's by having a, a sporadic intense exposure over a number of years. So we're talking, um, you know, first signs of sun in summer, you're getting a sunburn, and then maybe a few weeks later, getting another sunburn. It's not a gradual increase sun exposure or a daily dose, it's a chronic 
sporadic dose. Um, and the next one is the most important one that we want to prevent quite early is our melanoma or uh, what we want, or what we call a malignant melanoma. And it's from continuous exposure, much similar to the basal cell. So what we're going to do is show some images now. So a basal cell carcinoma, I like to remember them like a persistent pink pimple. So something that you might scratch away, it heals, a week later it comes back. It may come back with a vengeance. It's a never-rending pimple, it's persistent, it's quite pink. It have a pearly uh, consistency to it. And the vascularity is quite prominent. And I'll show you some images of what we mean. This is an Im close-up image. Uh, the first one we're seeing is what we call a superficial BCC. Um, it's like a persistent like, pink patch as such, but it's actually um, uh, quite nodular once be before it's been scratched. So the second one is a nodular basal cell carcinoma. So you can see it would have looked like a little pimple being scratched the surface of, um, and then it just comes back in that same area. So demoscopy imaged of um, BCC. What this means is a Demoscopy is um, how we go about taking a microscopic, uh, like a close up image of a lesion to determine its clinical features. So, the first and second image, if you look quite closely, is we can see the abnormal, what we call sharp vessels. These sharp vessels is because the abnormal or the cancerous tissue is growing underneath these vessels and pushing them upwards. So we are able to look at it closely and determine it as a BCC. So the vascular network is what we're looking at here. You can't really see the, um, the nodular pimple-like feature of it. This here is a scalp BCC. It's quite nodular. This will be from um, a balding patch or a very fair scalp um, having chronic exposure, so not wearing a sun hat or being outdoors, you know, walking, etc., and not having it covered. It is an area that a lot of people forget, and that is the scalp. So we're going to the second one now, which is our squamous cell carcinoma. Similar to the PPP of persistent pink pimple, we're talking patches now. So it's persistent, it's pink, and it's like a little patch or a scaly lesion. It can be raised, it's quite leaky, so it does tend to bleed. This is an invasive uh, squamous cell carcinoma. So you can see that the increased keratin or skin cells around the lesion, it's a little bit ulcerated. What ulceration means, it's been scratched, it's got a little bit of a bleed. It will then heal and then uh, come back. This is a, of an elderly gentleman, it's a scalp SCC. What this is, is it, it can look like another lesion called a um, solar keratosis, which is like a you can generally get them on the back of your hands or really exposed areas. The difference between this one is when we take a closer look is we're looking at it at a um, in-depth level of its clinical features. So melanoma. Okay, so this one here is the one that everyone would see leaflets on and education on at your local doctors, etc. And this is the one that we want to pay particular close attention to. So pink and brown makes you frown. This is what we mean, a mixture of colours or an abnormality in structure of the lesion together. It just doesn't sit right. And this is where we want you to then come and get a check if you see anything changing abnormal. And I'm going to go through this a bit further with you. So before we do that, these are some things that you may see, as I mentioned, that look similar to something cancerous, but are generally benign. The first one is that solar keratosis, um, and same with the second. It's on the back of your hand, the first one, the other one's on a forearm. You can see it's like a little pink scaly patch. Generally, for every one you see, there's a hundred more coming up that you can't see, and it's from chronic sun exposure. Then we're looking at a wart-like lesion. These are seboric keratosis. They kind of look like plaques or like a cornflakes stuck on the skin. They come in many colours and shapes. They are wart-like, they are quite rough. Sometimes they are a bit spongy. Generally on the back, um, they do come more with age. So we're looking at the 40 to 50 plus, um, the more that person may have. And it's in those areas mainly as well, like under bra lines, on the back shoulders, those sorts of things. 
So they do look quite aggressive and they do look quite nasty, but generally these sorts of things are benign. Nevertheless, if there's something that doesn't sit right with you, we definitely suggest coming in and we'll, we will clarify that for you. So we're going to start looking at some melanomas. So um, if you have a really close look at this elbow here, uh, I want you to try and see if you can see the little pin point of a melanoma. Traditionally, we are told that melanoma is of six millimetres. This is just a general rule of thumb. But melanoma can be of any size. So there have been cases where a malignant melanoma has been two millimetres in a very young person. So just because we have a guideline doesn't mean that, um, you know, melanoma can't break that. So here is an elderly, he, I think he's in his mid-60s from this image, and it's on his elbow. You could see that there's no other real lesion around it, hence why the doctor took a close look. Um, under close inspection, it was then... Um, sent off and then come back as a melanoma. This one here is one of my favourite images. I've just got one of the close-up images that I took. So it's what we call an ugly duckling or an elephant in the room. It hits you. It's the first thing that you see on this person's back and you're like, that doesn't, does not look like it's meant to be there. It's obvious. And this person, I gave them an immediate, I just referral, not a written referral. I just said, here's the number. Um, book in and then it was sorted. There was a happy story to this. It was quite an aggressive melanoma. When we start to see the pink, the brown, the blue, the black all together, it means it's a quite um, an established melanoma. It's been there for quite a long time. Upon chatting with this person, it was, I think, about three years here since the first time you noticed it. And then as it's on the, his back, he never really saw it. So. He didn't pay too much attention to it after that. So it's quite a um, confronting image, but this is a true blue, very um, hands down, large, evident melanoma. We're gonna show you a lot of within the head, neck and shoulder areas. This is because they're quite exposed compared to the rest of the body. This one is within the sideburn of a 65 year old driver. Um, so it's on the driver's side. Again, we don't really protect the head a lot. So all, we don't really protect our skin a lot when we're driving. As we assume, um, the, the, the glass or the tint is protecting us. Unfortunately, it doesn't give us an adequate amount of protection. A picture of a temple melanoma. Again, we can see here it is a truck driver. It's on the driver's side. It stands out doesn't look like it belongs there. It doesn't match the rest of his body or the skin recipe. Therefore, this would be, if I saw this on my friend or my partner or on my father, brother, sister, I would say, you know what, this doesn't look like it is very good at all. You should probably go get that check. So if these start to trigger memories of being like, oh yeah, I've seen a few of these, Make sure that you, the strongest power you have is encouragement. It's encouraging people around you to get it all checked because Australia is one of the highest in the world of melanoma. And we're on top of education and getting people out there, but there's a lot of resistance to getting a skin check. There's um, the fear of finding something. This person's quite young. Um, she's 23 years old. It's skin type 2, which I'll clarify later, and it's a fast-growing melanoma. As you can see, the rest of her recipe of her skin isn't to mull. There's none close by. It's a sole lesion. It's an elephant or an ugly duckling. It stands out. Upon closer examination, the doctor found that this was a um, fast-growing, quite rapid-spreading melanoma. So this is the five signs. So the five signs that you just want to keep in the back of your mind, the A, B, C, D, E rule, uh, to help you if you find something to distinguish whether it's time to get it checked or not. So the first one is asymmetry. Is it symmetrical? Yes or no? Asymmetry means if you were to cut a pizza, um, let's say into quarters, does each quarter match the, the others? Um, if the answer is no, then generally it's a it's got one sign of suspicion. It may be a bit of chaos going on. B stands for border. So what we're looking at is, can you see where it starts and finishes? Can you draw a line through it? And it's quite um, 
nice circular shape or it's a quite nice compact lesion. If it's, you don't know where the border stops or starts, so it's quite a mushed out, um, like smudged lesion, it's generally another sign of suspicion. C is colour. So we're talking about a colour variation. Does it change in colour? Has it changed in colour or is there multiple colours? So generally with melanoma, it changes week by week, month to month. So the colour it was last week will be different to what it will be next week or next month. Um, as melanoma doesn't maintain its same, so it will continually change. So what we want to look at is a red, black, brown, blue, grey. We want to see these signs. Generally, you know, some melanomas should, those tiny ones, it's hard to see. So this is where we look closely with the dermatoscope and have a very good clinical eye on them. The other thing is diameter. So I spoke before how sometimes melanoma breaks the rule of the six millimetres, which is the end of a pencil, which I've got here. So it's quite, quite small. But what we wanted to say is like six millimeters is a gauge, but has it grown? Like, did you have a very small lesion last month and now it's slightly larger? Again, you'd go and get that checked. Evolving or evolution. This is the change or the combination of those other four steps. So is it, is it changing week by week, month to month? So just a visual, if we split a pizza in two um, quarters, does it match? You can see in the first lesion, each, each slice of the pizza is quite the same. Whereas in the second, we will count that as a suspicious um, asymmetrical, it just doesn't match. And this is where we'll then go get it checked. Uh, border, as you can see, you can see the nice round border. You can see where it stops and starts in the first image compared to the second. You're like, I, I couldn't really outline that properly. I don't know where it stops and starts. Or it's just got, it's like a, it's not a very nice carpet. It's not very well laid out. Colour. You can see in the first image, it's just a variation of a lighter brown or a pink colour. Then we would say multiple colours in the second image, making it quite a suspicious, um, ugly duckling lesion. Not, again, not all follow this rule, but a majority do. The diameter. So, with the six millimeter rule, use that as your guide. And evolution, is it changing? So changing in color, shape, size over time. I'm gonna show you some, um, these are lesions that are hard to find or quite tricky as we don't always see these areas. These are what we call acral melanoma. These are more common in Asian, um, heritage or even the darker skin types as well because these are the fairer areas of them and more risky with sun exposure. So we're talking about under the fingernail. You generally will have a little half moon white at the base of the nail and this is what we call a lunula. If the pigment runs through the lunula and up your nail, it is something that we will call suspicious and we will get that checked. If it is from trauma, let's say a bit of a blood, like you whack your nail or um, something's fallen on it, and that is generally blood, blood trails up the nail, grows out, not to worry. Then we're looking at ones from the toe, between the toes and the feet, so not really checked. What we forget is when we sunbake, we may pop sunscreen on and we lay on our tummies, but our feet are exposed. And with this being said, then therefore what's protecting the bottom of our feet? I could probably ask a hundred people and I don't know many that will say they put sunscreen on the bottom of their feet. These are very hard to notice or um, diagnose. And the other thing that is, if they are quite um, aggressive, amputations generally a step that we would take. So um, again, check these. If you've got a partner and give them a foot massage, check it out. Another ear melanoma. This is a 35 year old. Um, it is on the left side. So it is again an ugly duckling. It stands out, doesn't really match its environment, has an irregular border, has different colour. Um, so if I can get my mouse here, you can see that you just it's just an odd shape. It's darker here, a bit pink here, lighter brown here. Suspicious. Scalp. 
So this is really important. Why found it cutting his hair through grooming? Wives are very important in this case because what's happening is he can't see the top of his head. Um, wife noticed it while giving him a haircut, suggested he go get it checked. Um, this person then had a very good ending to the removal of this melanoma, otherwise he would be none the wiser. So this is really important that these areas, again, not from wearing, you know, wearing um, protection from the sun, he may have been outdoors um, over a period of time in his childhood or late adulthood without wearing a hat or wearing sun protection on his head. It's an interesting story. This person here had a melanoma right here about seven years prior and got it cut out and removed um, in his country of origin since moved to Australia, um, came in for a skin check and said, oh, I had a lesion removed. I haven't had one since, I haven't had a skin check since seven years ago, but I have a very similar lesion showing up on my shoulder. So just here. What it's really quite hard to see is this one is a um, potential melanoma. It's starting to show up. It's got a bit of gray, bit of pink, bit of blue, bit of brown, you can't really see its defined borders up close. So this is one that we would monitor. Another scalp. So again, wives, superheroes when grooming husband's hair. A uh, picture found on the scalp as well. So he's an outdoor worker, doesn't wear a hat. You could probably see the chaos in this lesion. So there's multiple different aspects. The border is wrong. It's asymmetrical. It's not a nice pizza. It's got different colours involved um, and it's quite large. It would be about the, probably the seven to eight millimetre. All right, so these scalp ones, it's because the area is quite a fair skin and they're quite um, aggressive as well. This one didn't have a very happy ending um, as this young person, it took us seven months to get it checked and it was quite aggressively growing. If you take a close look at the lesion, you can see it's got a blue, grey, white veil over it. It means it's starting to aggress, so most likely in the bloodstream. It's got a bit of ulceration, so it's got a bit of a weak bleed. Uh, it's got a bit of brown, you just don't know where, it's, where is the lesion, is it that whole thing? Is it all here? Is it here? So unfortunately wasn't found as quick and then had to take more drastic measures for treatment rather than your standard removal um, with a large margin. So I wanna just bring about, sometimes you can have those differential diagnosis, so a lesion that looks suspicious, but isn't, and then nearby may have a suspicious lesion. This person has two ugly ducklings on their back. This one that I have a, um, dermatoscope image of is what will class as the suspicious lesion. As you can see, it's not a nice looking mole that's nice and even and consistent. It's got a very irregular border and it's got a little bit of a gray, blue hue and brown to it. Then here we have a differential diagnosis. So one of those plaquey wart-like lesions. So just some facts to just refresh your mind before more images come along is that approximately two in three Australians will be diagnosed with skin cancer. By the time they're in their late ages or like, I don't know, we're talking 70s, 80s. And this is really dangerous because at this stage, their skin is weak and their, their immune system is compromised. So we really want early checks or prevention. So more than 750 Australians are treated each year, not just for melanoma, we're talking there, there are multiple different types of skin cancers. I have just touched base on the top three that we will see visually. Melanoma is the third most common cancer in Australia. This could be for the fact of our lifestyle factors here in Australia. We have our beautiful warm climate, beaches, and a lot of outdoor work. And we have these activities that we spend in the sun and we have this idea of having beautiful sun-kissed skin is healthy. I agree, but I would wear a fake tan. But with this being said, this is why Australia is very high with our skin cancer rates. So let's go into some more images. So this is a 70-year-old cyclist. As you could see, when we're talking chronic uh, long-term exposure, you can see where his shirt would have gone to compared to where the sun has caused damage. 
So looking at the ugly duckling of the skin with the naked eye and then looking at it quite close, there's chaos involved. Multiple colours, irregular border, quite a large size lesion. Uh, I would classify this as highly suspicious and then follow-ups would have then been done. Very small malignant melanoma in a mother in mid-30s. So you could probably see she's got a few moles on her face and it probably wouldn't jump out at you if I was her friend or a family member, it wouldn't be super suspicious. This person came in for a full skin body check. This one was taken up close um, and was then flagged as suspicious. So that is where sometimes you might come in for one spot that concerns you, but it might actually be somewhere else in your body that you can't see or a doctor will classify as something that needs to be looked at further. So this is why we would do a head, shoulders, knees and toes check. It's one of my favourite images. A lot of people think that you can only get skin cancer where you get sunburnt or see the sun. I took this image last year, uh, a new spot in her eye. Um, wherever you have skin, you can get skin cancer. So just remember that. It only had been there a couple of months and it had started to change and get a bit darker. So you could probably see the different shades of brown. This is in the very corner of her eye. I then have referred this to an ophthalmologist as I couldn't take a close up scope picture. Um, I wasn't sure of a doctor that would be able to biopsy something like this, so it was referred on to a specialist. Um, I unfortunately don't know the full uh, treatment base of this yet, but um, it is quite an interesting thing or an area to get a lesion. So just keep in mind, you can get them anywhere. I definitely encourage you to check your mouth, in your lips, in your nose area. Just These are all skin and you can still get it. Eyes between your toes, under your nails, very common to be missed. More ears, 55 year old on the left side. So again, I don't know if you can see just, where's my mouse? Here it looks like this lesion, but it's actually this whole area here. This is the area you can see with the naked eye, but you see this whole lesion area here. We wanna make sure that um, if this was biopsy, or taken further that the whole lesion will be um, removed successfully. So it's really hard to see that um, how big this lesion actually is. So it'll be classed as suspicious. Again, this is something that makes it tricky. This is a potential melanoma without a tattoo. If you know someone that has multiple tattoos, um, but also has a tendency to mole or have a very extensive relationship with the sun, they still need to get skin checks. It does make it harder. However, this is an, I took this image so we, and saved it so you can see that there is a lesion within the tattoo. Unfortunately, we biopsied this and it has been sent off. So just waiting to see. And you can see within the, it would have ruined the art of the tattoo, but for safety of the person, it had to be taken. So this person did have a previous melanoma. So it wasn't something we're just gonna let slide. It is um, a high risk patient. So unfortunately the tattoo had to be altered. Another ear, as you can see, ugly duckling, nice dark lesion, a little bit of an irregular shape and border on the edge of the ear. A lot of people wear caps, don't protect the ears quite risky okay so again uh, suspicious lesion so refresh you with a couple of little facts so uh, a, a lot of Australians so 12,744 Australians are diagnosed with melanoma in 2013 unfortunately I don't have updates in for the 2020 or 2019 um, diagnosis of melanoma this could be because the the amount that we're getting checked haven't been actively calculated in, in contrast. So when we get updates of statistics, it's generally can, skin cancer overall, as to how many were malignant melanomas, as to how many were basal cell, squamous cell, etc. I don't have the exact number. And the majority of skin cancers are caused from the sun. I wonder if you can guess what the others are caused from, but I'll let you know a little bit later on. So non-melanoma skin cancer is more common in men with almost double the incidence compared to women. This I'm gonna repeat a bit later as well, but if you can kind of get your, 
way of thinking around why would men be more likely to have these um, than women? It's more to do with their lifestyle factors and their work life. So carpenters, roof plumbers, roof tilers, outdoor workers, farmers, I see a lot of truck drivers compared to the female work life. Some are outdoor, however, the majority would not be as extensively exposed to the sun. Can Anyone can develop skin cancer. I'm gonna go through these high risk people. So fair skin, very evident. Red hair, um, fair hair, light colored eyes. So talking those little fair skin or people that are highly likely to freckle or burn. So within a short amount of time in sun, they would generally turn pink. These people are the ones that tan, or burn, peel, never tan go back to white, actively tanned or use solarium. So solarium is the other one that I wanted to point out, the other cause of um, skin cancer. I worked outdoors or a weakened immune system. When I showed you an image earlier with a skin type two, skin type two is um, like what I'll say is a fair skin. So working a fit, if you, um, see what we call here skin type one be fair hair fair eyes freckles um, or red hair skin type two would be you might be light brown hair blue eyes fair skin type three might be darker features again and working up from there up until type six so we put people in these categories to see at what natural ability does their skin have melanin naturally residing um, before it needs to kick in and defend itself so someone that's more of a five to six will have um, a significantly higher amount of protection than those one to three. So who are at risk? So numerous moles on their body, dysplastic nevi syndrome. So people that have multiple large, um, more hereditary moling aspects to their skin, a personal family history with skin cancer. So just going back to this image, this person has multiple moles on their body. They're quite circular. They may be different shades and color, but none of them are, um, after a thorough skin check, are of any suspicion at this stage. This person would be at high risk because they have so many. It would be hard to determine what is new and what is growing compared to what has been there since adolescence. What's actually happened is this person has had one biopsied and removed with a large margin, came back as totally benign. Um, so I feel that the doctor that performed this was of um, suspicion of a lesion, as this person had so many. So this person would get a yearly skin check um, and get these mole mapped or imaged to make sure that if anything new or, um, or a potential melanoma rises, it's picked up. So this is really important. If you know someone like this, or if you are like this, it's really important to have a, um, a good thorough skin check because you are at high risk or that person is at high risk. So the sooner you get a skin check um, or a lesion is identified, the better your chance of not having extensive surgery and large scarring, um, being under a large amount of discomfort, also time off work. Um, the main thing is, is we want to avoid death. So the earlier we get it, the better your chances. So you need to become familiar with your skin. You want to come familiar with the lesions on your skin. It might be every few weeks, check it out. Even your family members, you are going to be their eyes and maybe the person that saves them. So you want to pick up on changes. Look for things that, are they persistent? Do they scratch off and never heal? Are they crusting? Are they quite, um, are they evolving quite rapidly? So are they, you want to look for the, even the non-pigmented lesions, so the persistent pink pimples, pearly in colour. Sometimes these lesions have a really weak vascular network, which means that they might just erupt and become quite leaky and bleed, um, and just by slightly knocking them. This is another telltale sign. So anything new, refreshing on the melanoma side, is it changing in thickness, shape, size, colour? Uh, we want to get onto this way earlier than getting into any of these images here. So sunburn uh, causes 95% of melanoma. So it's very rare for someone that were, uh, like lives in, um, let's say, Alaska 
compared to someone in Australia that for someone who has had maybe one sunburn in their whole life compared to I think I would have had multiple in my childhood. A sunburn is common even in those days where you're like oh, I was in the shade or I was in the car um, and you still get sunburn. I think if there's sunshine outside or, or if there's daylight outside there's sun. So it's even common in the cool and overcast days and most people mistakenly believe that oh I'm sorry I don't need to wear sunscreen today it's not hot Oh, it's not very sunny. It's actually, you're still getting UV radiation. You're still receiving a damage to cellular level. Therefore, abnormality in growth can happen. The sunburn doesn't just result in burning. It causes damage to your collagen and your elastin. So not only do we want to prevent aging and prevent skin cancer, it also like starts to develop the, um, the damage at the DNA level. And this is irreversible. So a, sun, a little bit of sunscreen each day will go a long way in the, long, in the grand scheme of things. So there's nothing healthy about a tan. We've heard this. Um, the Australian culture is to tan. As you can see, there's people lying on their tummies. How many of them do you think have put sunscreen on, on the bottom of their feet? I'd probably say none. Um, so it's not a sign of good health. It's actually a sign of distress. We have these little cells in our body called melanocytes. And these melanocytes release um, melanosomes that release melanin. And these, this message or this um, chemical signal is sent when our skin absorbs UV radiation, the skin's immune system goes, we're in trouble, we need protection. These cells will then re release melanin, giving us a tan. So it's actually a sign of your skin sending soldiers out to protect itself. It can only do so much before its defense is broken and a melanoma or skin cancer arises. So our natural tan generally is an SPF of three, so it might protect us for about eight to 10 minutes on a given day without sun protection. And this all depends on that um, Fitzpatrick or that skin type scale. So someone with a Skin type one, so a redhead, may will have significantly less natural protection than those are about four and above. So just retouching, if you have a tan, a natural tan, it generally means you've had a large dose of UV radiation enough to stress your skin and cause damage. So solariums is the other one that's causing um, of cancer. So these are now in all states of Australia are illegal. So they are in the black market. Some people are still owning them. You are not allowed to uh, charge for these treatments. The other important thing to know about these is 10 minutes here is an equivalent to about three hours of unprotected sun exposure. Now, photodynamic therapy, which is the use of UV, can still be used in medical purposes to treat um, severe eczema, psoriasis, um, some acnes as well. And this is where, for aesthetic purposes, it is no longer allowed due to the link to skin cancer. So people who are uh, of a greater risk of using this, so from age 35 have a I would say it was, I think it's above 60% now, greater risk of melanoma. So if you're someone that has used these when um, you were younger, when they were around, um, it's probably time you get a skin check. So we're talking blood relative. If you have a mother, father, brother, sister, so directly within your family that has had a melanoma, it is something that you should do regularly is get a check too. It doesn't mean that you are going to have a melanoma, but statistically there is a DNA link that could mean that you are also. So speaking of someone that has um, the dysplastic nervous syndrome, so multiple large moles, this is also a genetic link, so they may be at high risk. So let's talk about the steps to, to prevention. So we've heard these before, where slip, slop, slap, um, and so you're going to slip on some protective clothing, slip on some sunscreen, always 20 minutes before you go outdoors. The reason for this is a lot of sunscreens that we buy off the shelf are chemical sunscreens. These work extremely well, but they take about 20 minutes to become active within the skin and cause an adequate protection. So um, the difference between 
chemical sunscreen. As you pop it on, it's absorbed. It then absorbs UV radiation, breaking down, and this is why you would reapply every two to three hours or after swimming. Physical sunscreen, so speaking of the zinc that would probably pop on our noses or that really thick white cream, it reflects UV radiation. So it's generally a lot stronger, but, a, but not as appealing to wear. So there's beautiful sunscreens out there that you can wear that to feel like you're not wearing them at all. The other thing I want to touch on is aerosol sunscreen. I think a few years ago, there was a big thing on the current affair of this Peppa Pig spray on sunscreen that was causing sunburning children. In actual fact, it was user, user error. I believe it was because they weren't applying enough or as regularly. We should be applying a large amount of sunscreen on per area. So sunscreen should do these two things, protect you from UVA and UVB. UVA radiation penetrates deeper into the skin. So this will, what I call the UVA is UV aging. It damages the collagen, the elastin and the DNA network of the skin. UVB is more superficial, what I call a UV burning. So this is what will cause the erythema, which is the redness or the aggravation and um, the, the discomfort of the skin. So you want a broad spectrum sunscreen. That means is it covers wavelengths of light that cover both UVA and UVB radiation. You will see this on a sunscreen bottle. In Australia, it's very rare to have one that's just UVA or UVB. Um, so make sure you do check out your sunscreen. So always apply 20 minutes before you go outside and every two hours, unless you're swimming or it's of a sport and you are wiping it off. A chemical sunscreen breaks down, so it does need to be reapplied. For example, a zinc will work while it's there. Once the zinc is removed, it no longer works. So this is what I mean by amount per area. So the average adult should apply more than half a teaspoon of sunscreen to each arm, um, face, neck, including the ears, and just over a teaspoon for the larger areas, so such as you know your trunk of your body, your back, your shoulders, your legs. The reason why this is important is because the aerosol sprays, they're not giving you that amount. So I would use an aerosol spray sunscreen more as a touch-up. You want to slap on a hat? Okay, we're protecting the scalp. I've shown you lots of images of people that have had melanoma or skin lesions <coughs> in their ears and their head. And this is more so from lack of the protection. Seek some shade. There is definitely some evidence showing that there is UV still in the shade, but it's significantly lowered. So therefore you can be out in the sun longer um, with a little bit more protection and safety. So you want to slide on some sunglasses. I've shown you some, an image of where someone has a lesion within the very sensitive area of the eye. So again, protection is the key to prevent this. Make sure they meet Australian standards. So the best ones to get are polarised or ones that are actually of a tint and cover the whole eye area. A lot of the fashion sunglasses these days do still meet Australian standards. This is from the Sunsmart Cancer Council. I want you to just have a brief look at this. We know that earlier in the morning and the evening have lesser UV um, dosage than during the day. The hottest part of the day is generally where the UV index, where you're more likely to get a significant amount of um, burning or tanning. So just keep an eye if you're going to do anything physical or if you're one of those people that I don't want to wear sunscreen, do your things early in the morning or later in the evening. So self-examination, regular, regularly check your own and your partner's skin. Okay, It is really important to notice areas that they can't see or you can't see. If you don't have a significant other with you, it might be a friend or your doctor um, or get a full skin to head to toe check um, at the Skin Cancer Centre and it'll be all documented and it's just the stress is out of your hands. Use the five signs that I've given you for melanoma and also the sun protection. If you do have something that looks like an ugly duckling or it's just not sitting right, get, get your partner or someone to take an image or monitor the lesion. I had one um, patient, his wife actually got a bit of tracing paper traced it and then like the next month traced it to see if it had changed shape which was really clever because it had got sent in taken off 
happy days. So this is really important. I like the clever um, ways people are monitoring. iPhones, smartphones, take an image, put it in a folder, um, and then collect them together. You'll be able to see if there's a change. So some high risk people, just touching base on this again. I feel if something's repeated a little bit more, it might be, um, yeah, a little bit more of um, picked up on. So outdoor workers, if you are an outdoor worker and you haven't yet had a skin check, this is extremely important for you to go ahead and get one done. You are of a high risk compared to those that are inside drivers, uh, inside workers. So long haul drivers, so truck drivers, um, there are um, obviously statistics of people that are in the car a fair amount that that driver side is higher to likely to get a skin cancer of a non-melanoma and melanoma skin type. So fair-skinned individuals, immune compromised people, so people that may be going through chemotherapy or long-term um, uh, treatments from another illness, it can lower the immune system, so it weakens the skin's immune system and its ability to defend itself against the sun and therefore putting them at risk. Singles. Now, I put this in there because for those people that haven't had the chance to have someone check them for you, this is where you'd go to a professional, book in, get it done. Um, and if you can't see it back, it is about time that it was checked out. And statistically, more males than females. And this is because of the outdoor lifestyle. So, I want to encourage you to consider winter to be the time that you get your skin checked. There's a few reasons behind this, is it's the best time to get your skin checked because it allows time for if you do need anything burnt off or um, taken off or sent off to get checked, um, it allows it to heal, okay, um, without having sun exposure. If you need a topical treatment done, which I'll show you some image for, there's generally some downtime involved and you cannot see sun or it's extremely uncomfortable in the heat. So it's better to do it in winter time. Just, this is all just due to the lower amount that we're outdoors and the UV radiation involved. So some more images. This is a nodular basal cell carcinoma on a very young girl. It was, again, on the scalp, very fair, fine hair. And it's right in that um, virgin skin. This is a 50-year-old woman. She is of Greek descent, generally would tan if she saw sun. Um, notice this on her knee, notice that it started growing, but she didn't have any other moles. So this is why she's like, oh, that looks a bit odd and came in and got it checked. So generally people of European descent would categorize them as a more of a darker skin, skin type, so more three to four and have a more of a natural sun protection. This does not prevent them from having melanoma. This just may give them that slightly bit more of defense to the sun. So this person was very um, good. We're taking the initiative of getting it checked. This here, there's two lesions on his back. This one here is the one you're seeing here. And this one is a differential diagnosis. So seven year old, he lived alone. And had, this one had also been growing for three years. So it was vital that he got this, and he came in and got it checked and got it sorted. Um, this one here is a really interesting case. I noticed he was of a European darker skin type, had this odd ugly duckling on his skin, this one here. And then I took a close up image of it and he looked really, really strange. So what I did is I referred it straight to the doctor to get it further examined. Um, I'm not quite sure what it came back as. As, as you could see, if, I, if you were um, his partner, again, he was an outdoor worker, um, didn't have anyone to see his back, came in for a skin check, um, and then this was flagged. So you could see why this is important to really um, acknowledge that that is odd, it needs to be assessed. So this is its close up image, it's irregular, different colours, it's quite nodular, it's quite scaly. It could be ma malicious or it could be non suspicious. So you need to listen to your body. Is it itchy? Is it sore? Does it have a really weak tendency? So does it bleed? Can you just scratch it? Or um, does it just scratch off and come back? Is it is it persistent and doesn't heal? Has it changed in shape, colour and size? Um, and does it look different to the rest of your skin? If you're someone that's like, got, doesn't have many moles and it's popped up, or you've got this pink lesion that's come out of nowhere and it's just 
just very odd for it to be there. You're not someone that generally gets a persistent pink pimple. Um, make sure you do come in, take advantage of coming in in winter time. I encourage you to do this. It's going to um, take a lot of weight off your shoulders. So prevention. So head to toe check. It's conducted by a trained clinician in dermoscopy. So someone like myself with a um, health and biomedicine degree or a, you're um, in the National Skin Cancer Centres, you'll be seen by a doctor. Uh, and we use a handheld magnifying glass, so a dermatoscope, to examine the clinical features. So we will scan the skin and then anything of abnormality we will have a closer look at. If then, uh, after having a close look at, we say there's something not right, then that's all we'll take further, which I'll go into detail. So this is just, I just took a little um, snippet of a head to toe check. You could see that this person's covered up. Um, so I just, I start by just checking each area. I might just check a lesion here or there if it stands out. I scan over the body and the feet. I've, it, unfortunately, it cut the top end of this person out. But it was quite a, it's probably about a 20 minute check all up. It's quite effective in um, analysing that person's body or be documented anything of um, unusual um, visual signs. And it goes from there. So this is a dermatoscope. So we see clinical features. I've shown you a few images of where we look at the vascular or the colour and how it looks up up close. So this is what it looks like with the naked eye of a melanoma above the um, nipple here on the chest. And this is what it looks like under dermatoscope. So we're able to see the clinical features of the pigment and the abnormalities in this lesion. So if it's um, suspicious, we will then monitor it. So we take an image, take a closer look. We then biopsy and refer. So monitor, we will take a close up image as you've seen a few of my images and some of the doctor's images today. Um, and then that's when the diagnosis will start. So we may do, the doctors may do a punch biopsy. So it takes the thickness of the lesion. Um, you are, you don't feel this, a local anesthetic is used for um, the biopsies. So it takes a full thickness. So it allows that when it's sent off to see how the depth of the lesion. Sometimes the whole lesion is removed. And this is a shave biopsy. It removes the surfaces or sometimes the whole lesion itself. It's then sent off to histopathology to get a um, closer, more of a, a, a cellular level diagnosis. And this gives us the clear diagnosis of the site of the lesion. So how large it is, what margin needs to be taken, how aggressive it is. Um, and it, you know, it, it is one of the most amazing ways to find out how um, a lesion is spreading within the skin. Because sometimes with the naked eye, um, but then deep down, there's something else going on. This is a really important part of the process. Once the results come back in, you'll be given options as to what to do um, or how to be treated. So generally things like cryotherapy, maybe liquid nitrogen to freeze the lesion. A topical treatment could be used. So um, a treatment like Metfix. This is a treatment that will, um, there's a chemotherapy based topical drug that will remove um, the cancerous or precancerous cells associated with that lesion. Surgery, so complete removal or a referral to a specialist. So potentially a, a, a plastic surgeon if it's in a high risk area or an oncologist for cancer, or it could be like I sent that person to an ophthalmologist. So this is an example of PDT, which is photodynamic therapy and a topical drug um, for the basal cell carcinoma on the nose. So this is just stage by stage. Um, as you can see, it completely heals, the lesion's removed, um, but it is a lot of downtime. So this is perfect to do in winter time. It does become quite sore, but it is the most effective way to treat areas of very thin skin where you can't get a large margin or get sutures or stitches in. So um, if you've had a skin cancer, it's a good indication that you may be at risk of getting another one. So we would then see you every three, six to 12 months, depending on the type or how many, or um, upon recommendation by specialist. So the key points to remember for you and your family is if it changes, it's just very easy to just make a quick phone call or book online. 
um, at National Skin Cancer Centres, hop on the website. It'll send. You, it'll, it'll give you all the details there. Um, if you catch it early, it's generally a very cruisy, easy process. The doctors will be able to treat you on the spot with a biopsy or give you um, an indication of treatment plan. Skin cancer is the easiest and only skin cancer we can generally see with the naked eye. So skin checks save lives. If it doesn't look right, if it doesn't sit right with you on your skin or your partner's skin or a family member's or your best friend's skin, send them in. You don't need a written referral. All you need is a phone call, come in, um, and they'll be done by then. So at National Skin Cancer Centres, we aim to save lives through education and the diagnosis of treatment. So I'll just wait for some questions to come through. Okay, the first one is at what age should I start getting a skin check and how often? So there is uh, a general rule. So generally over the, over the age of 30 is a good time to get a yearly skin check. But we have seen cases where people as young as 16 or early teens have had suspicious lesions. So the, I would say if you're someone that is a teen that has um, multiple lesions to so come in then and we may see you infrequently, but over the age of 30, I would say um, a yearly skin check is necessary. The second question is, my husband has a mole that he keeps cutting when he's shaving. Should he get it checked? Uh, of course, you should get it checked. Depends how long it's been there. If it's something that's getting um, trauma to it regularly, uh, it regardless, should be, it could be something that's very benign. However, it is unknown until it's had a closer look at. Um, my brother has had a melanoma removed. Does it mean me and my children um, will be at risk? Um, and what can we do? So not so much your children, but yourself, but it just means that you need to be vigilant with protection. And maybe um, if it was a malignant melanoma, I would suggest you go in and also get a scan of your body done. Um, so head, shoulders, knees and toes check, just to clarify um, that you're not um, having that same issue of having a melanoma and kind of get a general overview from the doctor at what your risk factors are and how frequently you need to get a skin check. If your children are quite young, I'll just monitor them yourself. Um, and then if anything does arrive, uh, arise, I would then just send them in. As this offer, you can, you and your partner can go in and take advantage of the, you know, the $20 and winter um, and start from there. Cause then you just rebook every winter, get a full check done. So if there's any more questions coming through on Facebook, um, we'll answer them that way. But for now we will, um, say our goodbyes and it was, this will be recorded so you are able to re-watch it or send it on to a friend and um, I'll chat to you all then.